Hello, my name is Andrew and I'm from Professor Kwong's Calc 3 class. We will be explaining the difference between Calc 1 and Calc 3 when finding max, min, max and min. So we start with Calc 1. As you see through the graph and through the equation, we are only given one uh, variable, variable within the function. Uh, and, but next we find critical points by finding the derivative and setting it equal to zero. And then we take the first, then we find the critical points and plug that in to find what points within our graph are the critical points. Since that will determine through the second derivative test what points within our graph are either local mix, uh, are either max or min. While opposed to calc 3, the same thing, we have, well opposed to calc 3, we have, as you can see, x and y, which means we have multiple variables within our function. But the same thing, we find the derivative and set that equal to zero. But as opposed to the singular function within calc 1, we have multiple functions, we have multiple variables, so we set each one individually equal to zero through partial derivatives. Hello, my name is Gilbert. I'll be talking to you about calc 3. So in calc, with calc 3, you have a multiple variable function, which, which means z will be equal to x and y function. So, so for calculus three, you need to find the partial derivative of your multiple variable function, which means finding only the derivative of one or the other, either x or y. Once you do that, you, you treat the other like a constant, which means there, there no derivative will be found. Then you, you'll put each equal to zero once you find the x or y derivative equation for either one. Putting those equal to zero will allow you to, to, to find the minimum or maximum or the saddle of, of your three-dimensional equation. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is William, and today I'm going to be explaining how to find the maximum and minimum in Cal 1. Okay, in Cal 1, we only have just one single variable function. Um, and then uh, we perform the, uh, the first derivative test. After finding the first derivative, uh, we're going to make it equal to, to zero. And then we're going to solve for x. Um, then uh, we're going to perform the second derivative test to determine whether we have a critical point, a maximum, a minimum, or neither. Okay, um, after that, uh, we can evaluate the function and we can determine which is going to be the maximum and minimum. So with Calc 1, we have y equals cos and x as our equation, leaving us only one variable, and we have this as our graph. If we did not have our graph, we could find the first derivative of, y, of cos and x, which is y prime which y prime which shows us that it's a derivative which is negative sine of x so setting that equal to zero we have zero equals negative sine of x but because we're setting it equal to zero the, we could ignore the negative sign so whenever sine x equals zero x would have to equal pi zero or two pi accordance to our table and after that we have our critical points of pi zero and two pi plugging that into our original equation we have cosine of pi is negative 1, cosine of 0, which is 1, and cosine of 2 pi, which is 1. We are left with cosine of pi, because it's the lowest number, as a minimum, cosine of 0, as our, cosine of 0 and cosine of 2 pi as our highest value, which would make them our maximums. Hello. I want to talk to you about partial derivatives. So, finding a partial derivative of a multivariable function means that you're just finding the derivative of either x or y. For example, right here, f of x is finding the partial derivative of just x, which when you have cosine x it times sine of y, that means the cosine of x will be changed to negative sine of x. That's its derivative. And sine of y stays the same. Now when you do f of y, that means y changes, so you get cosine of x, and times cosine of y, which is the derivative of sine of y. So, so you put those equal to zero in order to find the rest. Hello, my name is Christopher Carmona. Here we're gonna discuss saddle points. To find our saddle point, first we locate our critical points and we perform the first partials test and we set those answers to zero to find our x and our y values. 
Then we perform the second partials test where you find our answer D. If this answer is greater than zero, then we know we have found either a um, minimum or a maximum. But in our case for the saddle point, we, the, this answer D has to be less than zero. This is our graph right here. This is our saddle point right in the middle that we have set at zero. The saddle point is a critical point, but it is neither a maximum nor a minimum. The saddle point, the function of the saddle point, the graph of it, is shaped like a saddle, but the slope of that is zero and it's completely different in every direction. That's fine. All right, guys. So after getting the after getting the uh, partial derivative, they make it equal to zero. So now we are ready to get the, the minimum and maximum point. Okay, so now we can evaluate the function after getting the partial uh, derivative for both x and y. Okay, so on this one, uh, as you can see, um, the, the minimum value is going to be at negative 1 for this one. And then the maximum value is going to be at, at 1. And then that's going to be how we find the, uh, the maximum and minimum value. Where in, in conclusion, calc 1, we're just, all we do is find a single variable function, y equals x and so forth. And to find the critical points, we set, we set the derivative of the function to zero to solve for x. Then we use the first and second derivative test to determine each critical point, which is either ma maximum, minimum, or neither. Okay, to conclude, in Cal 3, uh, we're going to find the, the partial derivative of the variables that, that we're given, and then we're going to make the partial derivative equal to zero, and then after that, we can determine uh, which are going to be the maximum and minimum value.